Welcome to the Astrologian 1 to 90 Leveling Skills Guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to play Yu Gi Oh! I mean, Pokemon TCG, I mean, Magic, I mean, uh, better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this. Bree Breaker can make a cheese copy of Count Cornelius Cheddar, which when played, untaps Bree Breaker, who can be tapped again to make another Count Cornelius Cheddar, which untaps to Bree Breaker this. again. Uh, this is cool, Cal. I like him because he's strong and uh, he wears big sunglasses. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally just still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be purely optimal. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to draw players in on the ground level, so they can make strides to improve themselves. All total tips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for A Realm Reborn, Level 60 for Heavensward, Level 70 for Stormblood stuff, Level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and Level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch note for minor potency changes or skill changes or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Astrologian is the pure healer partner to White Mage, and while that is a simple and strong job, Astrologian has a lot more buttons with a lot more complex tooltips. It's to the point that this is the only job in the game I feel suffers from button bloat. But this has made it a very flexible job, able to answer any situation with a number of possible solutions. It has some minor shielding capabilities, very minor, but it does similarly plan out its heals like a shield healer normally would. The biggest wrench in the works is the card system. Simply boiled down to damage buffs for your party, there is more to it. Putting the cards on better players, managing the sign system to get some extra buffs, all while trying to use all of your heals and put out some damage. It's a complex toolkit, but largely thanks to the card system. To obtain Astrologian, you need to reach the Heavensward expansion, which is immediately accessible upon completion of A Realm Reborn. The final quest of it is called Before the Dawn. Head into Ishgard's The Pillars, find the Astrologian Guild at the Antheneum Astrologicum to the east, and pick up the job as any level 50 job you have. Let's get into the finer details of each skill now. We start at level 30 with a couple already, this includes a few role actions, Repose, Essena, Swiftcast, and Lucid Dreaming. Got some very important buttons here, but I'm not going over them here. Check the card or the description for a video on healer role actions. I recommend it. Level 20, Maim and Mend. This is just some power boosts, 10% extra power on our damage and healing, which is entirely unimportant as far as how we play. This is less a power boost, more just the status quo. Level 1, Malefic, and level 4, Combust. These are our two attacking moves and what we'll be dealing with for our entire time. Malefic is a basic attack dealing 150 potency of damage to a target. It has a 1.5 second cast and costs 400 mana. Combust, meanwhile, is an instant cast spell costing 400 mana that does no direct damage. Instead, this is a dot or damage over time. This does 40 potency for 18 seconds. Dots work on a server tick occurring every 3 seconds. Divide by the timer and we have 6 ticks for a 240 potency dot. If an enemy will live for 12 seconds or more, Combust is stronger than Malefic, which later on, this is always going to be the case. Get used to putting Combust on every enemy you can, especially bosses. Mid pool with trash mobs, while the tank is running, feel free to pop Combust on enemies. This will slowly weaken them as you run, and since you otherwise can't normally run and cast, it's better than doing nothing otherwise. This is especially effective the more enemies the tank pulls, since that's more enemies you can combust. Level 2, 
Benefic and level 26, Benefic 2. These are your two main healing spells. Benefic costs 400 mana with a 1.5 second cast time, healing 450 potency. Benefic 2 is the same cast time, but costs 700 mana and heals 700 potency. The math seems to come out in favor of Benefic being better, healing 50 more potency for free versus the mana cost. But pending any changes in future patches, Benefic 2 is better in every single way. They have the same cast, recast, and nearly identical mana cost versus their power. Benefic 2 is 1 mana per 1 potency of healing. Benefic is 1 mana per 1.125 potency, trading a much stronger heal for a theoretically tiny mana gain, which I'm pretty sure at the moment, Astrologian is the healer with the most mana of any healer. Your mana economy is huge. We'll see why soon, but the mana gain is not worth it. For you to use Benefic, you need to either not be able to use Benefic 2 due to level sync, or things need to be going so wrong that you've died or run out of mana otherwise, which speaks to other problems than whether or not Benefic 2 is just better or not. Otherwise, remember the other part of healing. If nobody is hurt, I mean actually hurt, not missing just 10% only, do some damage, because Benefic 2 is relatively cheap and heals so much you will have tons of time for putting out the damage. Level 10, Helios. This is our AoE heal, area of effect. 1.5 second cast time costing 700 mana. It heals everyone within 15 yards of yourself with a 330 potency heal. If multiple people or even the entire party is missing some HP, you can throw out Helios to everyone. Just be wary of that one black mage sitting at the far corner of Austria. They're out of range of the heal, and if they're low on health, they may need some babying. Later levels raid-wide damage that can't be avoided is very common, so be ready to get used to those types of players. And even then, Helios isn't the main answer to AoE healing. Level 12, Ascend. With a very long 8 second cast time and equally massive 2400 mana cost, this raises any dead party members. Mistakes happen, be they yours or their fault entirely. You can't save everyone in every situation. This cleans up that mistake, especially if you'd see a co-healer in 8 player content or any tanks, you want to immediately get to raising. We have swift cast to make it go into an instant cast, so keep that in mind. But remember to raise. You often can't afford to let players stay dead, even if it is a DPS. More living players means higher DPS or surviving stack mechanics. If you need to slowly cast the raise due to no swift cast, make sure everyone else has high HP first so they don't die too. You can also attempt to macro a message to it to tell your co-healer about who you are raising so they don't also try to raise that person. If you do, keep it simple. Anything more than raising a target, you're telling them that you're a bad healer, not who you're raising. And even then, the proper macro may still lead to both healers raising the same player. Swift cast is swift after all. Level 6, Light Speed. On a 2 minute cooldown, this reduces cast times for all spells by 2.5 seconds. This effect lasts for 15 seconds. While all your main skills are a 1.5 second cast time, a few rare ones are 2.5 and ascend is 8. But you don't want to waste light speed on Ascend, typically. This essentially boils down to a movement tool, or allow you to weave in multiple abilities between spells. For an average player, the format is the more usual use. 1.5 second cast times are still cast times, so even though it's short, there can be situations where you don't have time to stop and cast, even with techniques like slide casting. So any situations with a lot of movement, Use light speed to continue to be able to cast, especially important if you need to heal. Which, this can also see some niche use in wall-to-wall -wall pulling in dungeons too. You should be running with the tank, but if you're behind and need to throw in a heal mid-run, light speed can catch you up. Assuming swift cast alone isn't enough. Level 15, Essential Dignity. On a 40 second cooldown, this restores a varying amount of healing. 
It has a base heal of 400 potency, but increases up to 900 potency as the target loses HP, maxing out when the target has 30% or less HP. What this means is, you want to use this when the target gets as little HP as possible, up to that 30% threshold. But you need to be careful as the 30% is pretty low. Getting the maximum 900 potency can be extremely dangerous in later levels, but not too bad in low levels. Practice playing Limbo, but don't go beyond your comfort zone. Even without the full power, this is a very strong heal. The main reason being a relatively short cooldown and being an ability, not a spell. You can weave this in between spell casts, losing no downtime. Let's take an extreme example of, say, a Gunbreaker using Super Belied, their ultimate cooldown. I highly recommend learning the differences between the tanks, if just for their individual ultimates. Anyway, Super Belied will reduce the Gunbreaker down to 1 HP no matter what, but make them invulnerable. You need to make sure they're healed before the invuln runs out. So one thing you could potentially do is Benefic 2, Essential Dignity, Benefic 2. This does not delay the second Benefic due to weaving, and depending on the level, is well over 2,000 potency of healing within 4 seconds. This isn't necessarily the correct way to handle Super Blides in every case, just one option. Otherwise, it could just be a free quick heal between spells. Not every situation is going to involve 30% HP targets, and even at just 400 potency, that's a nice bit of extra healing for you. Level 30, Draw and Play. This is the main gimmick of Astrologian, and the most difficult thing about it. It's starting slow, but it's still very busy. To start, this is a skill with charges, meaning it can store multiple uses. The charge time is 30 seconds, with a total 60 second cooldown for maxing out charges. Using Draw will instantly restore 500 mana. It also draws one of six cards, changing play into how you use the card. The cards are functionally all the same, but have some specifics to set them apart in who or what is the correct use. All the cards give a 6% damage boost to the correct type of target, or 3% if it is the wrong type of target. The buff lasts for 15 seconds in both situations. Each card belongs to one of two subcategories and have one of three different signs. The categories are melee and tank versus ranged and healer. This is teal with a weird plus mark versus purple and orbs bordering the cards. So for example, the balance is a teal border. This means all melee players will receive a 6% boost, while all other players get 3%. The reverse is true for purple. The signs are solar, Lunar, and Celestial, or Sun, Moon, and Orb. As we see, the balance has a small sun at the top of the card. The partner in the ranged category is the Bowl. Then we have the Arrow for Melee Lunar, the Ewer for Ranged Lunar, the Spear for Melee Celestial, and the Spire for Ranged Celestial. This spread is in the description with our opener images, if you wish to have it. But ultimately, unless you're getting into high-end play, signs are mostly not something to worry about. We'll talk about these when relevant, but now focus on trying to learn which cards go to which player, without having it affect your play. Pun not intended. Cards can honestly feel like a chore or even negatively affect your ability to heal your team if you get caught up in it too much. Recommended openers even end up using light speed specifically just for making cards easier and faster to get out. So I'm going to say this here, Learn the muscle memory for placing cards early while healing is still easy. Later on, getting lost in your buttons due to trying to focus on cards can end up getting people killed if it is a bad time. But ultimately, cards are a good buff to keep using, especially because of the mana you gain. But exercise caution with forgetting your heals. I don't say Astrologian feels bloated for nothing, and we're going to see more of this as we level. But now, for the most important skill, we have level 30, Undraw. Let's talk more general uses of draw quick. Anytime you do not have a card sitting on play, hit draw. The cooldown is so short, so not constantly having a card pre-stored is often pointless. 
The situation needs to be pretty extreme for you not to want to have a card on play at all times. You don't need to use it immediately, there is no time limit. So even if it's too early to use it, you could just hold on to it. So for example, the moment you enter a duty, hit draw, the cooldown for your second charge will begin. This could get you an extra card before the duties end, and is actually an important part of your opener, which we'll talk about later too with a lot of caveats. Otherwise, draw, play on the correct player. There's no in-game way to see who is properly playing their job right other than just watching the players. The aggro table is there, but it's not the most accurate thing. Throw cards out on the DPS as much as you can and see what happens. While you could go based on job, such as Samurai and Black Mage typically being the best jobs to give cards to, player skill always is a deciding factor of who is worth cards. For warnings, if you hit draw with a card already drawn, you will lose that held card. Secondly, cards cannot stack. If you try to put two cards on one player, the second will overwrite the first one, so spread them out a little. Unless only one player is good, then just wait for the first card to wear off. But that is our starting toolkit. Most of it was spent on draw, but otherwise yet not much different to a white mage. It's draw and essential dignity, which is an amazingly good ability this early on. Take the time to practice as needed, and again, don't get lost in the cards. Put as little thought into it as you can if you're struggling. The muscle memory will come naturally. Level 34, Aspected Benefic. Costing a tiny 400 mana and having an instant cast, Aspected Benefic heals a target for 200 potency and puts a hot, or heal over time effect, on the target. This hot is worth 200 potency for 15 seconds, or in essence, is 1000 potency. In total, that's 1200 potency. If your tank doesn't need big heals now and is taking sustained damage, this is your go-to spell over Benefic or Benefic 2. It costs less, it heals way more. The only issue is the 15 second wait time. In any situation that isn't medium amount of sustained damage, the slow timer can be more a detriment than a help. Enemy damage does go up, and the tank could make mistakes and take big hits out of nowhere. You rarely need to keep tanks topped off 100%, but any significant damage often needs to be healed sooner. Other Benefic's benefits come down to it being an instant cast. You can use this on the move for some cheap healing on the team. This includes during wall-to-wall -wall tank pools. People tend to warn away from using regen when the tank hasn't established aggro yet, but this is not an issue if you stand with the tank at all times. Enemies can't go the wrong way if you're standing on top of them when the next group is pulled. Also, if you see a DPS has taken a lot of extra damage, but you know that no raid-wide attacks are coming, you can throw a regen on them to let that take care of the rest. Level 36, Enhanced Benefic. No, this does not make Benefic good. It adds a 15% chance that every Benefic you cast will make your next Benefic 2 a guaranteed critical hit, so long as you use it within 15 seconds. Do you know what else has a 15% chance? Not crits, because those often have higher chances to happen. You spend more time on Benefic that could have been just used on Benefic 2 for better heals that can already crit. Again, there's still rare cases where you might Benefic, but generally it's just a waste of time. Level 40, Maim and Mend 2. Same as before, but this time increasing by 30%. You might not even notice it, but you might. It's just base power, no gameplay change. Level 40, Enhanced Draw and Redraw. Our first job quest base skill. I hope you get that you should be doing job quests by Heaven's Word. I won't be verbally mentioning this anymore, but it is denoted in the top left. Draw now additionally gives us Clarifying Draw. If for whatever reason we don't like the card we get from Draw, we can use Redraw to throw that card away for a different one. Say you have a team of all melee players and you get a ranged card. You can Redraw in the hopes of getting a melee card. You can only Redraw a card once. Clarifying Draw is spent when using Redraw, meaning you must take whatever the next card is or hope you have some luck, because you still have a 2 out of 5 chance of getting a card you don't want. Or 4 out of 5 if you're also hoping for a specific sign, which we'll get to. Level 42, Aspected Helios. 
costing 800 mana, this is just like Aspected Benefic, but for Helios. 15 yarm range, healing a paltry 200 potency, but adding a heart of 100 potency for 15 seconds. A 500 potency heart for 700 total potency. That's more than double the power of Helios, for a minuscule 100 MP increase. If you know for a fact that there is no raid-wide damage coming out in a while, but everyone still needs healing, use Aspected Helios. This comes with the caveat that if your party has been taking a lot of avoidable damage, you may want to additionally babysit party members. Letting a regen take care of all the healing comes with the risk that if the heal isn't given time to do its work, they can die. So while ideally Aspected Helios can be thrown out alone much of the time, someone may walk into death that they could have survived with more HP. Make the judgment call as you progress through the dungeon. And again, if big damage is coming out, normal Helios will take care of any immediate concerns. From there, you can let Aspected Helios take care of the rest. One of our missing roll actions comes in here with Surecast at 44. Level 45, Gravity. This only costs 400 mana and does 120 potency to a target and all enemies within 5 yams of the original target. On two or more enemies, this is stronger than Malefic and equal to Combust. Though typically, you're going to swap to Gravity only after the tank stops running. While running with the tank, throw on some Combusts. Then when they stop and plant their feet, start spamming Gravity. Keep an eye on the tank's HP of course. Tanks are going to be starting to pull multiple groups if they haven't already, so their HP will fall quickly. But if you can fit in some gravity, help end that damage by doing some of your own. Level 46, Combust Mastery and Combust 2. A whole level later Combust gets buffed, by a lot. It's now a 50 potency dot for 30 seconds, or 500 total potency. That's stronger than gravity on 4 enemies, but generally the use cases have not changed. You can get combust while the tank is pulling, then swap to gravity when they stop. It's okay if you don't combust on every enemy usually. Taking out multiple enemies faster, rather than making sure that one enemy dies faster too. Plus if the dot doesn't run for over 20 seconds, you're losing damage anyway. 30 seconds is a long time in early levels. It's only late levels where 30 seconds is less of a pipe dream. Level 48 is our final roll action, Rescue. I want to put a warning here quick too. Level 50 is a lot for Astrologian. We have a very simple skill, a confusingly worded skill, and the worst skill in the game on a conceptual level. I'm going to take them in that order even though the confusing skill is technically last, being job quest locked. So let's try and make some sense of this all. Level 50, Divination. On a 2 minute cooldown, this buffs your allies with a 6% damage boost for 15 seconds. This is mostly used on cooldown, which will hopefully align it with everyone else using their specific buffs on cooldown as well. This is the same power as a correctly used card, but not the same as your cards. You can stack a card buff and the divination buff. This retroactively makes them stronger as stacking buffs is multiplicative. Otherwise, that's the simple part. Use it whenever a big fight is happening, and try to use it on cooldown. Level 50, Sinistry. On a 2 minute cooldown and lasting for 20 seconds, this puts a buff on a target. Anytime a single target spell, which means no essential dignity, is used on your party, that target will be healed for 40% of the original heal. This includes on your Sinistry target acting like a 140% multiplier on all heals you do. Or if you need to heal that one DPS who keeps eating AoEs, you're still able to heal up the tank you place this on. Or the reverse, throw this on that pesky DPS so that while you throw big heals on the tank, the DPS gets some of the crumbs to fix their mistake. Or some later game fights that involve healing both tanks a lot. This is our first skill that truly has a lot of flexible uses, and is a big part of Astro's strengths. In most cases, you can safely just use this to make your spells do 140% healing when you need to use spell-based healing. But be thinking of those varied uses for other content. There's a lot of ways you can make use of it. And final note, regens do not count. The cast of Aspected Benefic will give the 40% heal, but the hot will not at all be affected or affect Sinistry. Level 50, Enhanced Draw 2, and Astrodyne. Your signs now do something. There's these three diamonds at the top of your gauge. 
Only when in combat, using a card will now grant you the associated sign. They come in from the right, sliding left as more get added. If you use a fourth card, the sign furthest to the left is pushed out of the gauge and lost. Upon gaining three signs, Astrodyne will light up. It has no real recast time, but essentially is a 90 second cooldown since you need three signs to activate. The effects of Astrodyne are determined by how many different signs you have, and given you have three different signs total, you need one of each to get the full effects. All buffs last for 15 seconds, regardless of how many signs it needs. One sign type gives Harmony of the Spirit, giving you MP Restoration for a total 2500 mana. Two sign types adds in Harmony of the Body, reducing cast, recast, and auto attack delay by 10%. So 0.25 seconds on a 2.5 global cooldown. All three signs adds on top Harmony of the Mind, increasing your healing and damage by 5%. Now keep the following in mind, we will never undraw because that would be a 6% damage up lost on a DPS. Healers and Astro especially are the weakest in terms of output. We can only redraw once per card. Now, go try and get three signs on a dummy. How many tries did it take? Now try managing signs in combat. Is your party all melee? But you need that sign the range card you just drew has. But then it's only a 3% buff on that one guy doing a billion damage. This is the problem with Astrodyne. You have a high chance of failing to get three signs. And to even get that, you're hitting so many buttons just to power up another button you have to hit. On top of Astro healing going to be very busy later too. Again, be extremely wary of getting lost in card play. While learning, I'm going to explicitly say, do not worry about three signs. Aim for two only. If you get three, it's a happy accident, and you're highly likely to get the two you need. This is very much a loss, but it takes so much stress out of the job while learning. Once you're more comfortable, you can attempt to push for getting three sign Astrodyne, but I have absolutely no reservations in saying here, don't bother until you're comfortable. The motions can be developed with normal play, so when you do want to push for three signs, you've had practice. The damage buff is great, but not worth the death of allies while you learn. The speed buff is good and basically free, and the MP regen is extremely free and proves how bad the mana efficiency of Benefic is. And let's quick mention our opener and how basically you're not going to ever ever get this outside of high-end extreme or savage. Because as mentioned, the moment you enter a duty and gain control, you want to hit draw to start the cooldown. This is actually you starting your opener. Pre-pull, draw and redraw if it's a bad card. Skipping ahead, Malefic, light speed, combust, play, draw, Malefic, play, draw, Malefic, Divination, Play, Malefic, Astrodyne, Malefic Spam. So we have a lot of problems. This draw, this needs to be done about 25 seconds before the pool begins, ideally 30. Otherwise, the third draw will not be available until later. Given most tanks instantly pool the moment the loading barrier falls, yet not having things work out. Luckily, as far as your performance, this doesn't mean much. This opener assumes you get three signs, or at least two. You might need to redraw for better signs, and might still not get three. So overall, it's not a big deal. The only thing that really should be focused on is to get this divination out after your third malefic. This is more for your party than yourself, so be sure to make this a static position. And this first malefic? you can start casting 1.5 seconds before the pull. But again, your average tank doesn't give a countdown outside, and even sometimes, even inside, high-end content. You just have to throw Malefic as soon as you know it's go time. Then the light speed is purely for making sure we can double weave. Without light speed, we can't both play and draw between spells. But this also means we don't have light speed for movement, which you'll want to keep a note on. Otherwise, use your spells the same as always. It's an opener based around the cards entirely. 
Technically, there's five openings, since as I said, redraw is a thing. But I'm only going to show you this one, the ideal scenario, and we'll come back to it at 70 to add a thing or two. I'm trying to advise caution on handling cards and getting lost in them all. I don't want to confuse with branching paths. This opening is rough enough, with having to constantly swap back and forth between enemies and allies, and so much you have to do here. So let me just emphasize that this is for when you really up your game. The specific benefits are often not worth it outside of high-end scenarios. Otherwise, let's karaoke open it. Karaoke openers are characterized by me saying the skill names as they are used in pace with the actual video performance. If you hear a skill name, it's just been used. Pre-pull. Draw. Redraw if it's a bad card, and let's skip ahead 30 seconds. Malefic. Lightspeed. Combust. Play. Draw. Malefic. Play. Draw. Malefic. Divination. Play. Malefic. Astrodyne. Malefic spam. This ends our short trip to 50 in our Realm Reborn skills. But now we've caught back up to the base level of Heaven's Word, so let's go check out those skills. Level 54, Malefic Mastery and Malefic 2. This is not anywhere near as big a boost as Combust got. Malefic 2 is a 10 potency boost. Nothing changes in how you use it. Level 58, Collective Unconscious. On a 60 second cooldown, this creates a bubble around you with a radius of 8 yalms. This is a channeled skill, so you must stand still for it to be maintained. If you are moving during the activation or move at any point after, the skill ends. You can use it for up to 18 seconds, but this is not something you want to be doing typically. First off, there are two effects. Anyone standing inside of it will gain 10% damage reduction. Assuming people are where they're supposed to be, this is a good party-wide reduction. At worst, you could protect some melee allies or even the tank during trash pulls. 10% less damage means they die slower. Secondly, a regen is placed on each player who enters called Wheel of Fortune. This regen will refresh so long as the bubble is maintained and the players remain inside. Then lasts for 15 seconds, or 500 potency per person at a minimum. Now I warn that you can channel it continuously, but that we don't want to do that anyway. Watch what happens when I use the skill while moving. I get the Wheel of Fortune effect and another buff that wears off after a few seconds. This is the damage reduction. Despite the skill being instantly ended, I and any allies who are inside of the affected radius gained both buffs. And the damage reduction lasts for about 5 seconds despite that. This is how we want to usually use Collective Unconscious. There will be cases where we want to channel it for a while, but those are not very common. While channeling, we can't even be casting heals, let alone any attempts of damage we would want to do. As I said, one of my preferred uses is to use this for the tank in trash pools. It's small, but a 500 potency heal and a couple of seconds of extra damage reductions means I am given extra leeway for the next two casts. And the short cooldown means that any boss fight coming up will still have Collective Unconscious available. Use it often, but anytime you can make use of both effects, and the fact that this is an AoE, make sure you try to use it there. Level 60, Celestial Opposition. On a 60 second cooldown, this is an OGCD Aspected Helios. Same 200 potency cure on hit, and 100 potency hot for 15 seconds, totaling up to 700 potency of healing. It even has the same 15 yom range. So basically, this outright replaces Aspected Helios every 60 seconds but can be stacked with it if health values are so low that you need both. Generally not a thing outside of heavy hitting trials and high-end content, but potential use. Unlike Aspected Helios though, this can and should be used on single targets since it's also the same power as Benefic 2. Once again, in big pools with tanks, throw out opposition for 700 potency of healing. It will be back up before the next pool or boss. So there's no point holding on to it. And if a DPS took a bit of chip damage from stealing aggro or standing in an AoE, this will heal them too as a side effect of you making sure the tank stays up. Otherwise, it's a powerful AoE heal that doesn't make you choose between different spells. Throw this out, assess the situation, and heal whoever needs more. Such as the tank, who's still taking lots of boss damage. We only got two new skills, but both show clearly how flexible they can be with short cooldowns. We'll get a little more of that with Stormblood, along with a little more... pain. Level 62, 
Earthly Star, or as we should call it, Earthly Galaxy. On a short 60 second cooldown, this allows you to place a massive AoE on the ground that has a few different steps. Click the skill, click the location you want to place it, controller uses to use X. Upon placing, Earthly Galaxy will grant you Earthly Dominance for 10 seconds and turn the button into Stellar Detonation. Stellar Detonation has the galaxy explode into both a strong attack and strong heal. Stellar Burst will deal 205 potency of damage to all enemies inside, and heal all allies for 540 potency. But what happens if we let the Earthly Dominance buff wear off? A second buff will be granted, Giant Dominance. The star in the center will also begin to glow brightly. This buff lasts for 10 seconds as well. At the end of those 10 seconds, or upon hitting Stellar Detonation, Stellar Explosion will execute. This is a 310 potency AoE to all enemies, with 720 potency of healing to all allies inside. Given the size of this galaxy, it is almost impossible for an ally or enemy to be outside of the range. Placed in the center of the action, anything and everything will be affected. In trash pulls, every single enemy will be hit with a massive AoE hit, while your tank gets healed for just slightly more potency than Celestial Opposition or Benefic 2. In bosses, this is guaranteed to heal the whole party and give the boss a good punch in the face. The only issue with this skill is that first 10 second wait. Sure, Stellar Burst is no slouch, but Stellar Explosion is just so good. As a result, it becomes a game of learning timing. You must use Earthly Galaxy 10 to 20 seconds before you need it. If below 10 seconds, you need to wait a little more before you can set it off. If more than 20 seconds, it will explode before you need the heal. You absolutely want to be using this first and foremost in a lot of situations. It's just far too strong. But you also need to make sure you're timing it. If holding for 5 seconds would line it with big raid-wide damage, it's worth it. If you're holding it for, say, 30 seconds, probably not worth holding. Trash mobs, though, absolutely make sure this is your first ability-based heal. You have to wait 10 seconds anyway, and you could just completely forget about it. It'll explode in 20 seconds anyway. Level 64, Malefic Mastery 2 and Malefic 3. This is a much more significant boost. Malefic 3 is a 30 potency boost on top of Malefic 2. But again, nothing has changed about these. Level 68, Hyper Light Speed. Light Speed has been reduced to a lower 90 second recast time. This means you can afford to pop it more often, getting heals or damage on the move. Or, you know, go full tryhard and use it only in openers every two minutes. One of these seems a lot more useful for your average player. Level 70, Minor Arcana and Crown Play. Oh boy, more cards! What I always wanted, Pot of Greed, which nobody knows what it does. Minor Arcana has a 60 second cooldown and gives you one of two cards, the Lord of Crowns or the Lady of Crowns which crown play will use. The Lord of Crowns will do a 250 potency AoE to all enemies within 20 yams. This is the same size as Earthly Galaxy. Lady of Crowns has the same size, but instead heals the party. This is 400 potency of healing. A couple of issues are involved in this one. You cannot use this outside of combat. So unlike draw, you can't use this pre-pull or the moment you zone into a duty. This is a boon for high-end raiding and openers, penalty for everyone else. Secondly, there is no redraw involved here. Whatever you get, you're stuck with. Makes sense with a 50-50 chance. Thirdly, there's just so many buttons already. There are now six buttons involved with cards and the gauge. Seven if you count undraw. And for as boring as the current card system is being all damage all the time, it's consistently useful. I like me my damage, but I'd rather have the Lady of Crowns more than Lord. And with no redraw, this is actively a button you cannot count on. But when you do get what you like, the uses are fairly obvious. Big AoE attack is amazingly strong for trash mobs, less so for bosses, even if it's stronger than Malefic. But then Lady is at worst a minimum potency essential dignity on the tank. It's free healing on top of any efforts you need to keep the tank alive. But then on bosses, this can take care of a weaker raid-wide attack by itself. You are a healer after all. Damage is nice, but ultimately survival is your main concern, and Lady is consistently more useful in that aspect, even in the worst uses for it. Maybe you disagree, 
but hey, that's up to you. My whining about it aside, that's our level 70 skill. It's flexible in a different sort of way, but it's there to be used when you can manage. React to it, and you can get some big gains. One of those gains is in the theoretical opener, so let's fill out the full opener we have. Pre-pull, draw, and redraw if it's a bad card. Skipping ahead 30 seconds, Earthly Star. Malefic, Lightspeed, Combust, Play, Draw, Malefic, Play, Draw, Malefic, Divination, Play, Malefic, Minor Arcana, Astrodyne, Malefic, Lord of Crowns, Malefic Spam. Let me warn again, you potentially want to hold Earthly Galaxy a little bit if you can make use of the healing, but if you want to be maximizing your damage output, you're using it for the opener. In most cases, as long as you use it right before pull begins, it should at least deal with some form of raid wide. Most bosses tend to start with that, or a tank buster. Ideally, the timing is 4 seconds before the pull. But also again, random players. Outside high end, you probably won't get to use this at all. Then at the end, we've added in Minor Arcana with Astrodyne. If we get Lord of Crowns, we can immediately throw that out. Every possible raid buff will be out at this point. At level 50, there weren't many of them, but now at 70, most every job has one. So it's a lot more than just 250 potency plus divination. Then that's about it. Healers tend not to have much going on with their openers. Again, the issue with Astrologian is that this is the ideal opener. You might want to redraw and delay a bunch of stuff. I'm just ignoring redraw because again, incentivizing general learning rather than the optimal mastery. So let's just quick get into the karaoke opener. Pre-pull, draw, and redraw if the card is bad. Skipping ahead 30 seconds. Earthly Star. Malefic. Lightspeed. Combust. Play. Draw. Malefic. Play. Draw. Malefic. Divination. Play. Malefic. Minor Arcana. Astrodyne. Malefic. Lord of Crowns. Malefic Spam. We have a good few more great skills ahead, and luckily no more fiddling around with openers. So let's see Shadowbringer's offerings. Level 72, Combust Mastery 2, Malefic Mastery 3, Combust 3, and Malefic 4. Combust 3 is getting a small bump up to 55 potency per tick, or a total 550 potency dot. Malefic 4, meanwhile, is 230 potency, a 40 potency boost over Malefic 3. Still the same skills, though. Level 74, Celestial Intersection. On a 30 second cooldown, this restores a target's health for 200 potency, then applies a shield for 200% the original heal, or 400 potency worth. This shield will last for 30 seconds or until broken by added damage. Essentially, this is a guaranteed 600 potency heal every 30 seconds. It's a bit less flexible than some of your other toolkit pieces, but it's no less useful. The simplest use is just throw it on the tank. Heals them a little and prevents a little bit of incoming damage. It could be trash mobs, boss auto attacks, or even tank busters. Before or after. Throw it before a buster to top them off and reduce the damage. After to heal them up and prevent a few auto attacks. And obviously you can throw it on non-tanks too. It's a cheap and low cooldown heal, so in boss fights this can heal away our mistake. And help the DPS to survive the incoming raid-wide damage. Though again, you have a bunch of options for this goal, which is why I want to re-emphasize here, Astrologian does have a lot of buttons, but that means you have a lot of options. This is both good and bad. Level 76, Horoscope. This works similarly to Earthly Galaxy, in there being a timing element for this for maximum effect. It has a lowly 60 second cooldown and 20 yom range. Using Horoscope applies the buff to all allies in range for 10 seconds. At the end of the 10 seconds, or upon hitting the button again, Horoscope will heal all affected players with the buff for 200 potency of healing. However, upon using Helios or Aspected Helios with Horoscope active, it will refresh the timer on any one hit to 30 seconds and upgrade the buff to Horoscope Helios. This is double the power, doing 400 potency of healing. Raid-wide damage even from bosses is starting to get up there. Some bosses will even do back-to-back -back raid-wide damage, or otherwise use it often. 
Anytime you feel the need to use Helios or Aspected Helios, throw up Horoscope first to get an extra 400 potency on top. Or let the regen work and pop Horoscope Helios for the next raid wide. But you don't need to use it only in that situation. You could just throw it out by itself for a little healing. In trash pulls, 200 potency isn't a lot, but it's something extra you could give the tank when you run out of your stronger skills. And being 30 seconds, you can use this even more often than those much better skills. Or in bosses with raid-wide damage, Celestial Opposition has been established to be as strong as an aspected Helios. If that's not enough healing for topping everyone off, throw out Horoscope 2 for an extra 200 potency. That is ultimately Horoscope's biggest issue. The better options aren't exactly on long cooldowns, and to make the most of it, you need to be casting an AoE spell too, limiting the full power to bosses. Sure, you can technically horoscope into Aspected Helios right before the tank pulls the first pack of enemies, but that's awkward and weird. Good luck getting it to work at all, for what doesn't seem to be worth going for. Level 78, Enhanced Essential Dignity. Essential Dignity now has charges. This is great, one of our potentially strongest heals now has two charges that can be stacked. Don't be afraid to spend these. The cooldown is still nice and short, and low HP players get a nice big heal. Level 80, Neutral Sect. On a 2 minute cooldown, this turns you partly into a shield healer, and buffs all your healing spells by 20% for 20 seconds. So at worst, you could use this as a healing power boost. But additionally, casting Aspected Benefic, or Aspected Helios, will place a shield on all affected players in addition to the regens. These shields do not stack with each other, and you can only place one shield on a player the strongest shield taking priority, but they do stack with the shields from actual shield healers. Aspected Benefic gives a shield with 250% of the healing, or a functionally 500 potency shield. Aspected Helios gets a 125% shield, or functionally 250 potency shield. And again, this is on top of the regens, plus the increase by 20% from Neutral Sect itself. Anytime some big healing is needed, this is your go-to skill. It can be weaker than Sinistry in single target, since you need the shield to be completely spent before putting a new one on, but this has the option of being far stronger and flexible. It can be used for one or two target shielding, big single target healing spam if for whatever reason you need that, or you can get some major raid-wide healing in. Plus in higher end content, a single auto attack can be enough to completely eat away a shield. Like I said in previous sections, damage is going up for even dungeons, so a 20% increase to all spell healing is nice on its own. You can fight back trash mob damage when you run out of ability heals, multi-raid wipes happen a lot more often, and high-end fights are going to be bringing in lots of damage in general. Anytime you'll need to use healing spells, you can use less with Neutral Sect. Healing is starting to get harder, and this is a skill you can use to put it back in your favor. You're likely going to be using a lot of it in the coming dungeons with Endwalker. Unfortunately for us, healers are best shown off in a dungeon environment. So while I'm going to entirely avoid using spoilery footage, some level of showing dungeons will be needed. If you're worried, come back at 90, as some level 90 dungeon footage will be present. Again, with minimal spoilers, it will be the post-game dungeons so not the level 90 story dungeon. Level 82, Malefic Mastery 4, and Fall Malefic. One last male fanfiction upgrade, we have Fall Malefic. It's a 20 potency boost over Malefic 4. Level 82, Gravity Mastery and Gravity 2. Gravity 2 is a mere 10 potency increase over Gravity, but I thought it was important to emphasize it in its own section that 10 potency in AoE is worth a lot more than single target. That's 10 extra potency for every enemy, and AoE usually ends up being the ideal usage in trash. Level 85, Enhanced Healing Magic. This buffs our healing spells by a bit. Benefic is up to 500, Benefic 2 is 800, Aspected Benefic has a heal and regen of 250, and Aspected Helios has a heal of 250 with a regen of 150, and Basic Helios is up to 400 potency. You likely had to fall back onto relying on these a bit more than before, so having extra output, even if it's only a little, should bring things back into your favor. 
Just make sure you're still using all of your tools in the correct ways. Sinistry and neutral for big healing boosts, galaxy and opposition for easy and big heals. You're being forced to get more creative with your toolkit, especially since your off global heals didn't get the same boosts. Level 86, Exaltation. On a 60 second cooldown, this places a shield on a single player. This lasts for 8 seconds, reducing damage by 10%. When the buff falls off, it will heal the target for 500 potency. This is a less work version of Collective Unconscious. You don't need to stand near the tank once enemies start spamming AoEs around, and the heal is all at once rather than a slow regen. Regens have their place, but this certainly will be more comforting as a full heal. This takes care of the hit of a tank buster, and some of the healing needed afterwards. Tank isn't the only option for this skill, as usual. Can throw this on a DPS who took a Vuln stack. This will reduce the damage of whatever the next attack is, and further make up for the difference with healing them afterwards. Not the best use, but better than a dead body. Just make sure to add this into your rotation of skills. Level 88, Enhanced Celestial Intersection. Celestial Intersection now has two charges instead of just one. As a reminder, this is essentially a 600 potency heal in total, with a very short 30 second cooldown. At the end of fights and in walks between the next one, one or both charges will be fully restored. Throw it out on the DPS who is weakened before the next raid wide hit, throw on tank for busters, etc, etc. Make use of these even more liberally than you were before. Even if you want to save one stack for emergency DPS babying, keep the charge timer running at all times. It's a quick and easy heal with extremely fast turnaround. Level 90, Macro Cosmos. On a massive 3 minute cooldown, massive for Astro standards. This is both a strong AoE attack and potentially party-wide full heal. All enemies and allies within 20 yams are affected. Starting with the simple damage, it does 250 potency to the first enemy, with all enemies after the first taking 100 potency of damage. So weaker than gravity if there's 6 or more enemies you can hit with gravity. But the healing effect more than makes up for this. Macrocosmos becomes Microcosmos after using it, while placing a 15 second buff on you and your allies within range. Upon hitting Microcosmos, or when the timer runs out, all players with the buff will be healed for 200 potency plus 50% of all damage taken, up to the max HP of each player. This sounds like it would pair extremely well with Living Dead, as it works before the coming rework that has been announced. And it kind of does? If you know the tank is going to use Living Dead, you can pop Macrocosmos at about half HP left. Watch the Living Dead timer. When it's about to run out, Pop Essential Dignity for the guaranteed 900 Ponzi, then hit Macrocosmos. I say Pop Essential Dignity first, because you need really good timing to get the maximum amount of power out of Macrocosmos, if it's at all possible. And while Endwalker Dungeons hit pretty hard, you might not even see the tank take a full HP bars worth of damage within Macrocosmos. And you need them to take two full HP bars to become a full heal. Minus the 200 Ponzi, which will barely be anything overall. Because of this, this is very much a skill that shines in higher-end content more than casual content. Let's take some higher-end fighting with back-to-back -back AoE damage. You can't survive two of them back-to-back -back usually, so you can macrocosmos, take the first hit, throw out some sort of heal such as Earthly Galaxy, which you'll have placed 10 seconds earlier, then take the second hit. Assuming you've healed enough for everyone to survive, macrocosmos will now wear off healing everyone for the amount of damage one of those AoEs would do, plus the 200 base potency. Like I said, the big issue is to get a full party-wide heal, there needs to be some major damage within the span of 15 seconds, and some healing needed in the middle. But Endwalker seems to be giving that in spades, at least with extreme and higher levels of content. Even the base 8-man difficulty seems to have a good amount of potential uses for Macrocosmos, just not full heals. But only one tier into the expansion, I can think of a number of uses. At worst, you can use this for trash pulls and making sure the tank gets good heals in the middle of a pull. Combining it with the tank ultimates and general play, you can take control of a lot of situations. Despite the star theming, Astrologian is a very planning and time-based job. We're a long ways away from Heavensward and the much more direct time-based skills, but Astrologian is still very much resembling a time mage. While I personally remain unfulfilled by the card mechanics and Astrodyne existing, 
Macrocosmos alone is a very alluring skill to add. It needs specific timing, but rounds out the package quite nicely. Thank you for watching this Astrologian 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anna Nidhogg slay waste to your enemies.